Previously on I Want to Be a Hilton, J.W. and Jules solidified a relationship that had been blossoming from the start. Kathy reshuffled the teams, making Latricia and Jack Hay team captains. The contestants received a lesson in sportsmanship by engaging in games of the elite. Speed croquet. But sportsmanship was nowhere to be found. To Brendan's dismay, Jarrett led the blue team to a victory in the first event. In the second competition, Jules and the blue team lost their composure and the game. Yeah! In the final and deciding event, JW and Jack Kay proved to have better pedigree than Latricia and the green team and won the entire competition. Oh my goodness! Awesome. I cannot believe that we lost. Once again. After her fifth straight loss, Latricia was unable to contain her frustration. Somebody because I asked you to get out of my face. I wouldn't. Don't touch me. In a show of good sportsmanship, Lennox Lewis took both teams out to dinner. Oh, this is so cool. And gave them additional life's lessons. You don't want to be a cheat. In the most intense deliberation yet, the contestants finally opened up and Kathy broke into tears. Meaning you. Meeting Paris like has been a dream come true for me. It came down to Brendan, who many of the contestants saw as a bully. Do not portray me as somebody that does not care because you are absolutely wrong. And Latricia, who was at the center of every controversy. Get out my face, it doesn't matter. In the end, one of them was eliminated. Latricia, I'm sorry your name's not on the list tonight. Kathy had a surprise for the remaining contestants. Congratulations. You're the final seven. From now on, there will be no more teams, and you'll be competing as individuals. The remaining contestants toasted to the good life and were one step closer to the ultimate goal, to live like a Hilton. Just seven hopefuls are left. Who will impress the mother of all socialites? Find out on I Want to Be a Hilton. Now that Teams Park and Madison have been dissolved, the seven remaining contestants will be sharing one penthouse suite at the Melrose Hotel. So now we're all back to where we started. Seven people in a penthouse apartment above New York City. It's on now, boy. Oh, are those new couches? Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's uncomfortably strange to be the only person from Team Madison since Latricia's gone. Right now, the game is each person for themselves. It's no longer a team competition. Before it's all teams great, team this, we're gonna win, go team. Now it's like dirty. This is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for it to get dirty. You a pet pig? Huh? A pet pig. Yeah, I call him Billy Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Bacon. <laughs> I never thought in a million years, a little southern Mississippi boy who's never been to New York. Me and him have just completely bonded. I just feel like I've known him forever. Like, he, he's cool. You know, I love Jules to death. She's a great girl. And like, how I act and feel about her is real. It's not fake. I'm not trying to put on just to try to build an alliance with her. I really genuinely like her. All right, we can finally open this. You are cordially invited to meet for lunch at Palm the world-renowned restaurant, Kathy Hilton. Casual yet sophisticated lunch attire. The contestants depart the Melrose to meet up with Kathy for an early lunch. Little do they know they're about to come across something very ugly, the New York paparazzi. It was like in your face. They're boxing out who's going to get the best shot. It's definitely it starts to ring home to you that this is, this is really happening. I wasn't really used to seeing all the cameras flashing. I don't think any paparazzi are hiding in my bushes at the house. 
want to get a picture of me peeing in the front yard. Why did, oh my <laughs> God, that's so no, ridiculous. That's no, that's a tough play now. The contestants meet up with Kathy Hilton at the world-famous Palm Restaurant. Established in the 1920s, this Manhattan hotspot is famous for its seafood, steak, and famous clientele. Hi, honey. How are you? Hi. How are you? Oh, what gentleman. Oh. I heard you had a little run-in with the press this morning. That scared me a little bit. <laughs> exactly, I know. Believe me. Now that you're getting ready to face the spotlight, I wanted to prepare you. Meet David Aloka, celebrity Hello. photographer to all the stars, and Jeffrey Slonim. He is a writer with the top magazines all over the world. I'm here today to tell you guys what and what not to do when you're in public. The whole industry has changed over the past 10 years because of these digital cameras. Everybody has one. I mean, there's one in phones. You should be aware of where you are, how you act, and how you look at all times. And I'm there to get flattering pictures that will not make a celebrity look bad. But for one of me, there's 20 other photographers who are paparazzi or stalkerazzis. What are stalkerazzis? Stalkerazzis are guys who they'll be at your hotel, they'll be at your supermarket, they'll be anywhere you guys are, in trees, in helicopters, in bushes. They'll be everywhere to photograph you at your least likely to be known moment. Sometimes you have to decide what kind of image it is you're after. Do you want to be photographed hammered in the middle of the night, stumbling out of her club? Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to show you some pictures of some celebrities that we've taken, and they've been in the tabloids. Nikki's outrage, they're real. <laughs> Watch where you're doing what at all times. There's cameras everywhere. <laughs> it was shocking to see yourself really in that situation. I mean, can you imagine in a grocery store walking up to the checkout and you look up and there you are, a picture of you on some rag magazine. Very clearly. JW survives two day party binge. <laughs> Somebody was close to you took that photo. Well, this picture could have been taken at any time, but according to this, you're on a two-day party binge. That's all that matters. Not that you were sleeping. Jack A totally freaks out. Madison is cursed. Busted. JW racked with confusion over Nikki's huge assets. <laughs> Thank you so much. We we'll really welcome. appreciate it. Thank it's been you. very helpful. Thank you. And good luck. I'm sure you'll be taking their picture soon. Yes, I will be. Watch out for this. There's so much more I need to learn about the press, um, how to handle myself in different kinds of situations. So they were interesting, weren't they? Very good. <laughs> yeah, it's not always fun and games. Yeah. Just these things can happen to anyone. And you learn a, a little humility when you have to go out into the public and go to the market and go to a restaurant with your family and you know people are looking over whatever. Whatever. How is it for Paris to have to deal with everything that was in the papers? How, how do you handle something like that? The tension in the room was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Yeah, it's not always fun and games. Yeah. How is it for Paris to have to deal with everything that was in the papers? How, how do you handle something like that? She has a very positive attitude. Yeah. And she's very strong, but she's very sensitive too. And there's times, you know, she'll come up into my bedroom and she'll just start crying like a baby. You know, like a little girl. And just very sensitive, very hurt. You know, unfortunately, that tape came out. And it was obviously very hurtful. It was very embarrassing, but it also taught me, you know what? That's life, and you have to just let go. I thought it was really great that Kathy was able to speak to us openly about how she felt 
about her daughter's situation with the videotape. It taught me don't be so damn judgmental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because as my father-in-law has said, and I love this saying, those the gods destroy, they first make proud. You know, it is what it is. I love who I am. I love my family. We didn't hurt anybody. And life goes on. You know, we've been through a lot, our family. But my main concern really was Paris. I think Kathy's very inspirational on how she spoke about the problems that she and her family have gone through. Because it's hard to talk about your family, especially the kind of things that have gone on in her family's life. And I know it's tough living in the spotlight because her family is always under the microscope. We're going to be taking you this evening to a red carpet event. So you'll see some of the pros in action and get to see how some of these people deal with the red carpet and with the journalists and reporters and photographers and, and all of that. But before all that, I'm very hungry. Amen. Are you hungry? All right, let's have some lunch and enjoy. To get the contestants ready for a trip down the red carpet, Kathy Hilton arranges a meeting with a distinguished public relations executive, Susan oh, hi, Magrino. Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Nice to Hello, meet you. Hello, I'm Jack Hay. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Susan Magrino, and I hear that you've had a very interesting morning. <laughs> I think the most important thing that you have to remember is that you get one chance to make a first impression. So you really need to think about what you're doing, how you look, what you want to say when you go out. I think that if you're asked a question by the media, listen to the question. Pause before you answer. Don't answer it right away. Think about what it will be. Once you say it, it's out there, and you won't be able to take it back. This morning when we came out of the hotel and we were getting into the limo, we got attacked by paparazzi. So how do you handle that when you're completely taken off guard? Smile for the cameras, wave, get in the car, and tell the driver to hit the gas. <laughs> um, don't say no comment. Don't put your hands above the camera. Don't, don't get angry. Don't get into an argument. They're taping it. Susan Magrino is a very fascinating and bright lady that uh, I think represents Martha Stewart and some other um, big names that are definitely making a huge splash in the media right now. And in this world, perception is everything. See, now, I'm from Long Island, and I'm constantly in the city, going to clubs, doing things like that. And I just, I mean, that, that's what I do on a normal basis. And when I go out to nightclubs, maybe I dress a little, you know. So I just, I you know. <laughs> I'm just being honest, though, you know. It's well, you just, should be honest. That's the most important thing is to be Because that's what I do. I mean, in the summertime, I'm out in the Hamptons going to clubs, and then we're in, in the city, and that's a big part of my life. Jules is extremely talkative, if not verbose. She just kept kind of repeating herself. I'm, I'm a very social person. I mean, that that that's, I mean, obviously, oh, they, well. yeah, I, I don't stop talking ever. The best advice I think I could give you is to be as gracious as you possibly can. Great. So, does everybody feel like they've learned a little bit more today about yes. the media? Oh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck to all of you. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> to a red carpet event. I was really excited. It was a chance to get dressed up and see how it really is with all the cameras and all the paparazzi. You've been flirting with every girl trying to get down. Every time we see a girl, every time we see another female, you are making comments. I don't say I don't act jealous. I don't do anything. Do your thing. Go ahead. Fine. I don't know why there was friction between me and JW. I mean, everyone has jealousy inside. I mean, to say that everyone is 100% confident, I think is a lie. And when there's something on my mind that's bothering me, I address the situation. Well, I just would can't... you act jealous you're not my girl? No kidding. But what I'm saying is, yeah, but the bottom line, yeah, but it's just like a level of respect. It's a level of respect. But I haven't said anything. I haven't done anything. Go do your thing. Have your fun. I don't give a but, but give me some respect at the same time. I haven't disrespected you at all, sorry. You're letting all this Okay, but this is you. the thing, though. This is the thing that John would That's why I backed off. That's why I backed away from you, because you let all this affect you, and it, and it gets on my nerves. He kept telling me, you know, don't take it personal. I just can't stand when, you know, women complain and blah, 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 blah. But I am taking it personally, because now it's like we barely say three words to each other. Well, because I complain a little bit. Like, I don't know if I buy it. I'm sure we gave him plenty of
Kathy Hilton sent private limousines to take the contestants to their first red carpet event, or so they thought. I was really excited when I found out that we were going to a red carpet event, especially because I'm obsessed with every gossip magazine there is. When we arrived at the Manhattan Club, we entered to find out it was a press conference, and we were the subjects. When I first got there and I saw that the press was there, it was like someone stabbed me with a knife. Like, I, I just thought I was gonna vomit all over the place. Take your seats, fine, your place card's here. We were immediately hit with flashes from cameras all over the place. They had their notepads out, their cameras. It was just very nerve-wracking. I knew that we were all gonna be on spot, being that there were microphones in front of us and we all had our little labeled seats. And I thought, oh boy, it's on, here we go. Good evening, everyone. I have a real treat for you tonight. I'd like to introduce Donnie Deutsch. Donnie is a legend in the world of advertising and a master at the art of image making. As if that weren't enough, he's now the host of a new hot talk show on CNBC called The Big Idea with Donnie Deutsch. No one's better than Donnie at getting celebrities to open up and reveal their true colors. That's exactly what's about to happen tonight. Ready or not, you're sitting in front of your next challenge a real press conference. Each of you will be under the gun and I'll be watching closely to see how you handle yourselves. I'll be looking for honesty, integrity, composure, and overall presence. So Donnie, I'm putting you in charge of these future stars. What I'd like to do at this point, we have a few more folks we want to call into our press conference who have some questions. Oh my God. <laughs> when I saw all those, members that are no longer members of the game walk in tonight. I thought, here we go. I thought all hell was gonna break loose. We have a few more folks we wanna call into our press conference. Oh my God. <laughs> Latricia walked in in a very bad mood. She never looked at anybody or smiled. I think Latricia feels that she's been wronged in some way. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I'm gonna take a drink for this one. Anybody else want some water? <laughs> First thing I did is I had to get a drink of water because I knew it was gonna be a long night. What we're gonna do is each one of you gonna get up here and be on the hot seat. And your ex-mates have some very pointed questions and I please would ask you to answer them directly. Pull no punches. This is really what tough journalists do. They ask the tough, very personal questions. Jack Hay, you have the dubious distinction of being called up first. It's all yours. I really didn't think I would have to see any one of those people until the reunion. It's all my old teammates and me. It's no secret that you don't like me. Is it because I'm beautiful or are you jealous of me? <laughs> I think you're very beautiful and I am not jealous of you. I'm just wondering, why would you say to everyone that I had sex with Yvette when I never told you I did? You had alluded to having sexual relations with Miss Yvette. I said I hooked up with her. Maybe you need to get your facts straight. Maybe you need to utilize your vocabulary better. Well, that's what you think. Jack Hay, good job, let's move on. In the press conference, I thought Jack Hay was definitely nervous. Uh, Jules, it's all yours. How did I get so lucky? Wow. <laughs> oh boy. Hi. <laughs> this should be fun. First question, please. Jules, when we first met, you described your, your ideal guy as someone who's already a socialite. Now, do you feel that JW is the one? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember actually saying that I was looking for a socialite. I'm from New York and he was from Mississippi. So it was, you know, a stretch out of the ordinary for me, but he has a great personality, he has a good heart, and that's why we clicked. Do you see yourself with him? Right now we're really good friends. So and you just, just go around kissing your friends? No. Because <laughs> I never got a kiss and I thought we were friends. <laughs> your teammates say you never shut up and you're highly annoying. How do you oh, feel do about I? that, Jules? Um, I talk a lot, but I listen a lot, believe it or not. And pe my friends know at home that they can come to me and talk to me about anything, and I'm always there for them. 
As far as it being annoying, yeah, I have my moments when I complain. But other than that, I feel that I'm pretty easygoing. And once I'm over the situation and when it's time for our team, every single time that we had an event, it was time for us to buckle down and work together. I did, and I shut my mouth, and I, I worked really hard on every event. So, yeah, I talk a lot, but everyone has their okay, annoying parts, on. and if that's mine, so be it. Jared. Jared, what do you say to critics who say that a country boy can't be a socialite? Really, I think the critics wouldn't know what they're talking about. Um, it's something that just you cannot pretend. You definitely have to go through some extensive training as far as etiquette and how you carry yourself, definitely how you dress. Um, I think from the beginning, I definitely didn't fit in, and hopefully by the end, I could. Let's bring up Nikki. Hey, Nikki, what does it mean to be a socialite? I believe that being a socialite would be not just the partying aspect of what everyone thinks a socialite is, but you you just you're just a how do they say it? You just uh uh You just, you're more dignified and, you know, also going to social settings. You know how to act in certain situations, act in a proper way. I think that up until now, I've been really quiet and no one really thought I had it in me to actually come out with, with answers that were... What do I say? Not intelligent, because I don't think anyone thought I was stupid. Well, maybe people, I don't know. Okay, questions for Vanessa. Why do you think Team Park wanted to transfer you to Team Madison when they were given the first opportunity? Honestly, I believe that I'm a strong player, and they felt that it'd be best if I wasn't on their team. And the boys don't seem to like me very much. Why is that? I think they're intimidated by a strong woman, very much so. Next question. Vanessa, what do you feel this game is doing to the way people act? It changes people for the better and for the worse. How does it change people for the better? Jack A is very into learning about how to sit properly, how to walk properly. Bad example are um, attitudes, loud voices, and um, pretty much egocentric attitudes. Whose ego has been brought out the most? I believe Brendan's has the most. Um, when I first met him, he was very calm and nice and collected and a very intelligent man, which I have never said he wasn't. And um, I witnessed as soon as the camera started that he started becoming a loud presence, which he was not prior. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Gotta play some music sometime. That's it. Uh, JW, who does not deserve to win this competition that's sitting up here? deserve to win this competition that's sitting up here. I look at it like this. I see that everybody up here sitting before me has just as much opportunity as I do. And I don't portray myself as better than anybody. That's how I live my life. And yeah, I mean, Jules has just as much right to win it as I do. Brennan has just as much right to win it as I do. So does Nikki, Jared, Jack A, and Vanessa. May the best man, woman win, you know? and. Just because my story might be heartfelt and, you know, he's worked so hard his whole life to do this and that, you know. It, I'm not trying to gain sympathy from a crowd or the public or national TV. You know, I just want y'all to know my story, my side, and where I've come from, you know. And if that helps me win, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, JW, thank you. Great job. JW's just now starting to lighten up. We can see the soft side of him. JW's actually becoming a great guy, and I felt he did an awesome job. Tough room, tough room. Okay, Brandon, up, up on the stump. Uh, is that true that you have stolen ideas from Vanessa? No. Not at all? No. I think what we should do is make this the Hilton home. We like to recreate the Hilton family, and then we'll have high tea at the Hilton household. Right. And that's our theme. Like, created the idea. It's been claimed by more than one person. 
what, what am I going to say? If there's, in a brainstorming session, things are thrown out. People pick up things and people don't pick up things. If I have picked up on something that she has said and she felt that I stole those ideas, I really can't respond to that. If I misrepresented myself and, and for the better of the team, then so be it, because we won. Vanessa, did he steal an idea? Um, I said, you know, instead of doing something silly like a luau, why don't we do something like have the, us recreate the Hilton's home? You were the one who represented that idea. Okay, I'm guilty. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm, I'm really lost in all the jargon. I, it was very evident that Brendan was grasping for straws during the press conference. I, I was, there was no malice involved. and I wasn't trying to like say, I'm the guy and I'm the idea person. I was just simply trying to state our idea as a team and I was being a spokesperson for that. Brendan, are you as phony as you seem? Woo! I feel like I'm a pretty genuine individual, but if that's your perception, I can't really argue with that. I heard during the second challenge that you called Team Madison stupid. Team Madison Why would got you the watches, and I did. Well, I'll answer your question, you sir, if you will let me. Go ahead. Come on. Um, I think the luau in general and, and serving anything on a cocktail um, or on a, on a toothpick is not something that's very classy. You lost the whole event because I'm, we were at the clam bake at the end there, so. Yeah, I did call you stupid because your luau was stupid, everything that you did was stupid, and that is why you lost. You lost, that's why I'm sitting here and you're sitting there. This brings a close to the press conference. I would've even gotten nastier, but okay. You did, I think you did pretty well. I gotta tell you, I think you guys, for first time out in a press conference, held your own pretty well. Most of the answers were direct, they were honest. I think they were from the heart, and I think you guys did an impressive job. Thank you, Donnie, for being our special guest tonight. Thank you for all coming. As you know, tonight you are all playing as individuals, which means no one is exempt from elimination. I'll see you all in deliberation to determine who will be going home. Good night. Very good job. Very good job. This time because it's an individual thing, so I'm not really sure what kinds of things will be brought up. Y'all too, y'all would go at it. I'm telling you. At the end, oh, oh, but you would, but you would, but you would. You an opposite yeah, but me and Nikki have gotten along. Since that does one. not mean <laughs> it's opposite. No, it is. I'm telling you, believe me. I promise you. you I don't, don't talk bad about people. I'm not saying you talk bad about it. I'm just saying there'd be tension because when it got down to the end, you'd be like. <laughs> You trip that in a heartbeat. That's just how it is. You'd be like, I don't think that's how my nature. If I flash that quarter million dollars in front of your face, I said, tell me something dirty about her, and I'll give it to you. I wouldn't have anything to say. I'll be truly upset if I go home tonight. Of course, I, it would be a lie to say that I'm not going to be hurt and upset if I go home. But at least I could say that I went out with my head up high and I didn't sell anyone out just to win this game. I, what I'd really like to see is you and Brendan in the end. I don't have issues with Brendan. Not like serious issues. But... I, don't have, I don't have any issues with him. I, we've told each other but in the beginning. If it comes down to me and you, you know what? Hey, may the best man win. Well, obviously, may the best man win. I ain't going to make up nothing. That's what I'm saying. I would never make up anything to win. I am not asking you to make up with him, but you would think of something. The competition is about money in general, and I don't feel bad about selling anybody down the river to make myself look better. This is my first elimination. I'm definitely nervous. I, the nerves are going through my body. I, I, I'm very frightened. I, I don't want any of this to end. Kathy is the ultimate judge in this game, and that's all I care about. I care how she sees me and how she portrays me as a person. I wouldn't be surprised if I got kicked off only because I'm the only one from Madison, and everything works so well with them as a team. I'm the only one that they hardly know, so I would be easily cast off, and they can just live in harmony happily ever after. Jared, Jules, JW. This is your first time here. How does it feel? 
A little nerve-wracking. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Scared. Tonight, I think, is our most difficult deliberation yet. The stakes are higher tonight because not one, but three people will be going home. The stakes are higher tonight because not one, but three people will be going home. I know this week was a tough one, and I think that you all learned that life in the public eye means dealing with the press. You can't run from them, and you can't hide from them. All you can do is learn how to best handle yourself when confronted with them. So this week, it was your turn in the spotlight. Some of you perform well, and others perform quite poorly. Vanessa, how do you think you incorporated the lessons you learned last night in your performance? Um, I believe that I utilized everything that Susan was teaching us, which was um, basically don't give any extra information about right. any topic. Um, keep it short, concise. If you were going to do anything different, what would you do? I don't think I'd do anything different. Okay. I was very proud of how I acted, actually surprised. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm glad surprised. you learned something. Mm -hmm. Jules. How do you feel about being put on the spot last night in regards to your relationship with JW? Me, me and JW were friends. We've become, you know, good friends. Yes, when we first met, there was an initial attraction towards one another. And yes, we kissed, but, you know, through the weeks, we both just decided that, you know, it would be best to be friends. Now, so. JW's looking a little stone-faced there. What's going on, JW? Everything she's saying is true. I mean, we've always kept and had a level of respect for each other, and we've always been able to balance that out, so it's never been a problem, you know? We're just good friends. Let's talk about the competitions overall. There's going to be one winner. Who should go home instead of you? For me to sit here and pick one person that I don't think deserves to win, I can't answer that. Frankly, I wish I could take the whole team with me to the end. I really mean that. But I have to ask for your help in making my decision because you guys are there more often than I am. You're together. JW, whose performance are you disappointed in? Uh, if I had to say one person, I would say that definitely Nikki kind of stumbled a little bit when they were talking to her. Jack A, it's coming down to three people going home. Who don't you think performed as well as they should have? I would have to agree with JW. With some of Nikki's questions, she didn't seem she did stumble. Probably Jack Kay's first question that she got, she really stumbled. She gave a one-word answer, didn't sound sure of herself, and they kept asking her to elaborate, and it sounded like she couldn't. So you would say Jack A? Yes. Brendan, what do you think was the hardest question that you were asked last night? The hardest question I had probably had to do with being phony or not. Shots of my character, shots of my personality, who I was as a person. Brendan, do you think you have an advantage because you're a golf caddy, having already been exposed to this lifestyle? Sure, I was exposed to some of it, but you know, it's just hard being when you're sitting here constantly hearing it over and over and over again. You know what, guys? I bust my ass harder than anyone else. And I promise you. And it doesn't mean I'm less deserving than anybody else in this room. It's called exposure. It's exposure, but exactly. it's just. It, it, That's it's, what the whole thing's about, though, exposure. Yeah, the whole thing is, right. is about exposure, right. exactly. but it's exposure to you how just I got. You that you had been exposed to it, though. Jules. I heard you did a lot of talking at the public relations lesson with Susan Magrino. And last night at the press conference, I saw it firsthand. In public life, you need to not only watch what you say, but how much you say. What lessons from this process are you going to take with you? I don't feel that I've had this massive transformation from the day that I got here until now. I think it would be a lie to say that I have. Jarrett. You're very quiet over there. Have you had any run-ins with Brendan? Only thing that ever hurt me is the first time he told me that he would never be my friend and that we're never friends. Why do you think Brendan said he wouldn't be your friend? I have no clue. 
You know, I was being really honest. I said, Jared, you know, I said, we probably won't be friends. I just, him and I don't click as individuals. Not everyone here has to be friends in the end. Well, it's probably not the best strategy to tell someone that, is it? Thank you for all your honesty. Thank you. I'm gonna write my list, and I will see you shortly with my decision. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. It's time for us to move forward. It's time to get rid of these people. It's time to get this game going, and I'm glad to see that we're finally making some progress in this situation. I wasn't surprised at being singled out because me being the youngest and being a girl on the outside, I may appear weaker. So I think I was the easiest one to attack in there. When I was sitting in front of Kathy, it's pretty much hard to breathe. You, you don't know what to think. You don't know how to act. Um, you're so nervous about if you're gonna be on the list. No one wants to go home. In my hand, I have the list of the four of you that will be continuing on with us. The three names that I don't mention, unfortunately, I'll be very sorry to say goodbye to. Everybody hold hands. <laughs> crazy. When you hear your name, please rise and go into the dining room. First name on my list tonight is Jarrett. Oh Congratulations. The next name that will be continuing on with us is Jack A. I cannot believe I made it this far. That's all I wanted to do was to see how far I could make it. I feel great. I made it through one more time. You, you've shown so much. That's why you're here, and I think you deserve it. The next name on my list is Vanessa. This is a really hard one. You're all really wonderful. But the point of your experience here is personal growth. And the people I've chosen to continue on with me are those who have pushed themselves to take the lessons here and really work to transform themselves. And so, the final name on tonight's list It's JW. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> you gotta get out of here. Thank you. Oh, come here, you. Yeah. You deserve it. You've changed so much. Yeah. You just don't see. I don't. I mean, you don't see it, but I've seen it. Brendan, thank you so much. Thank you. I had a great time. I really appreciate it. Here from all sweat. Being in New York has really been a wonderful experience for me. This is it, baby. I've gotten to meet some interesting people, fly a helicopter to the Hamptons, and really appreciate life. I guess. I'm always watching everyone enjoying a round of golf or enjoying a good meal or enjoying a nice glass of wine. And I never have the opportunity to really sit down and do that. It's hard to think about going home. 
I tried to manipulate every situation as best I can, but I didn't do it as well as everybody did. Yeah, I'm the biggest loser as anyone else I call a loser because I'm not sitting in that room tonight. Nikki, I feel like I'm saying goodbye to one of my own. Oh, that's very sweet. I look like Paris, and of course, she loves her, and so I think that that will help me leave a lasting impression. What hurts the most is just walking away from this experience, knowing that there's so much more to learn from Kathy. I'm sad, to be honest. Nobody wants to go home. Jules. It hit me. It hit me. I knew it was going home. You so much. It sucks. And nobody wants to be sent home and not be able to go all the way with it. But I have no regrets. Maybe I could have been that winner who didn't have to go back to answering the phones. And there was so much of me that Kathy didn't get to see. I don't want to go home. I think I do deserve to be here. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. GW, I know you and Jules had a special relationship. You, might, you want to go say goodbye? All right. Just walk in there? Sure. I love Jules to death. She's a great girl. She was really the person I liked the most out of this whole thing. She was really awesome. I'm gonna miss her. Better win it. He came down and like gave me this hug. I'll see y'all soon. All right, bye. Bye. I just started crying out of the blue. I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know. I don't know. Cause it just it hit me. Well, I would just like to raise my glass and to tell you how proud I am of all of you. Thank and you. I'm just so thrilled and privileged to have met all of you. And thank you. To the good life. To the good, to life. The good life. To be rich, be a hill, to be top of the list. It's the high society.